Our second reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke. I invite you to open your Bibles to Luke chapter 10, beginning at the 38th verse. If you are able, I invite you to stand for the reading of the Gospel. Last week, we read the story previously about the Good Samaritan. This week, we continue in Luke and read about Mary and Martha. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. May God's word be revealed in this reading. Amen. Please be seated. You can keep your Bibles open if you want to in case I misquote something. Do you find it interesting that right after the Good Samaritan, which we talked about last week, was how much is enough? And we decided that there's no such thing as enough. That immediately following that, we have the story of Mary and Martha when there's too much going on. I think there's good reason why they put these stories together why the uh, writer of Luke put these two stories back to back, not necessarily that Jesus told them or it happened in that order, but because they're continuing two things that I have found. Number one is the Good Samaritan says it's never enough. Mary and Martha say sometimes it is. And the second reason is because both Martha and the lawyer seem to be trying to prove that they're good enough. So we're going to talk about those two things. We are not going to bash Martha. This is not a Martha bashing. Just being a doer doesn't make you bad. Uh, Martha was a good person. She was probably one of these very conscientious and hospitality-filled people. Have you ever known anybody like that? You know, who it doesn't bother if you call at the last minute and say, I'm bringing six people home. It's just okay with them. They just, what they do. Now, me, I get so caught up in, is the house clean? You know, do I have everything I need? Uh, Oh, I wish they weren't coming because I don't have time to do this. Uh, What do I have to feed them? Oh, I don't want to cook. You know, I get so wrapped up in that that I just don't invite people over. That's the solution for that issue. Uh, No. I get distracted by the wrong things, and I think that's what is said here. Twice the word distract is used. Martha is distracted, it says. Later on, Jesus says, Martha, you are distracted by the wrong things. So it's not that Martha's doing is not a good thing. It's the fact that Martha doesn't see what's in front of her nose. You are wrapped up in taking care of all of this stuff, and you don't see who is sitting before you, and you need to spend time with him while he's here. He's not telling Martha she's wrong and Mary's right. He's saying, Martha, Martha, look at what you're doing. A sandwich would have been fine. You know, a sandwich and chips and a bag of cookies from the store. You don't have to spend all this time in the kitchen. The word distracted has some very interesting meanings. In Greek, 
The word is periespato, and it means to be anxious and to be do unduly concerned about something. All right, what in your life are you anxious about or unduly concerned? Whatever that is, you are being distracted from what is important. It also means to be pulled or dragged away. In this case, it's Martha who's dragging herself away. It's nobody else. Now, I want you to think about the ways we use distractions. I hate this thing right in front of me. I don't hate it. I just dislike it. It's a distraction. It definitely is. Pulls me away. Thank you for being so observant. I appreciate that. Uh, what in your life pulls you away from the important relationships, the things that are really important? I used to say, you know, getting, well, I still say, getting old is not for the weak, and it's not. Believe me. And people ask you, well, how old are you? And I want to say I'm still the same age I was inside. I'm still 20. But I'm a lot smarter than I was at 20. Not smarter, wiser. I'm not sure I'm any smarter, but I am wiser. And I think that's the wonderful thing about growing up in Christ, is we get wiser and we realize what's important. Martha had not realized what's really important at this time. You know, there's a time to clean the house. There's a time to cook dinner. There's a time to go to work. There's a time to spend with your spouse. There's a time to spend with your kids. There's a time to do this. There's a time to do that. But right now, how much time do we give God? I think we're a lot like Martha. We don't know how to stop doing and spend time with God. We have all the excuses and the reasons in the world. And you know the best place to hide from God? In the church. Doing the work of the church. Martha thought she was doing what needed to be done, and she couldn't see what was going on. So the ne next aspect that she shows, she's like the lawyer. She's trying to prove, you know, I'm going to impress Jesus. Remember what the lawyer did? He went up and asked Jesus, the Good Samaritan, before Jesus tells the story of the Good Samaritan, the lawyer comes up and says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He already knew the answer. He knew the scripture. A lawyer was like a scribe or a Pharisee. He knew the scriptures. He knew he needed to love God with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his strength, and with all his mind, because he's the one that said it. Because Jesus said, well, what does scripture say? And the lawyer spouts it out. He asked a question he knew the answer to. He's trying to show Jesus he's good enough. Did you notice that Martha asked Jesus, are you going to just let Mary sit there while I do all this work? And then she said, tell her to get up and help me. They're both telling Jesus what to do. I found that interesting. They're both trying to justify this is the important thing, and I know it. You live with anybody that knows everything? I don't live with anybody who knows everything, but I have a sister who knows everything. In fact, I have two sisters that know everything, and I have had a father who knew everything too. And it's really irritating. Well, Martha is acting like she knows everything. I know what's important in this moment. And what Jesus is telling her is not, you shouldn't be hospitable to me, and we sh need to eat dinner, but you don't realize what's important right now. It's right in front of your nose. Do you miss it when it's right in front of your nose? Or do you stay so busy that you can't see what's in front of your nose? 
I think that most people, most of us, stay real busy so we don't have to think about things. We don't have to think about where we are, what we're doing. We just do. What do you think about that? You see, this is a very interesting parable, and we've heard it a lot, or a story. We've heard it a lot, and we think it's just saying that Martha needs to sit down and listen. There's a lot more here than that. Martha needs to figure out what's important. And that's a lot harder than just sitting down and listening. What is important in your life is having a relationship with God so we can make it through the times that we don't think we are going to be able to make it through. What's important is the relationships in our lives that are based on our relationship with God. And when we don't have that and catastrophe hits, we are not only devastated, but we don't know how to get out of the mess we're in. And we feel all alone. Last c- catastrophe that happened in your life, or the last chaos that happened in your life, did you feel alone? Did you feel like nobody can understand what I'm going through? And I think we all do it first, don't we? Nobody can ever understand what I'm feeling. I say that too. And then I realize that God can. And God is there. And God gives me the strength to keep going. Doesn't make it go away. But I'm able to realize that the most important things in my life are the most important things in my life. And the stuff that I think is important probably isn't. You see, Martha didn't get it because she wanted to prove that she was good by doing. How many of us are still trying to prove that we're good enough by doing, by showing, by knowing? I think that's the worst one for us these days. I know more than you do about whatever it is you want to know more. That's why we gossip, isn't it? Tell me about so-and-so so I can be up on somebody else and I can tell them I know more about so-and-so than you know about so-and-so. I know about more about what's going on in the church than you do. I know more about the Bible because I can quote the Bible. Can you? Do you know where it says? Oh. I have a concordance to tell me where it says that. My little pea brain can't hold all that. Yes, the devil can quote scripture too. So how many of us are Martha's and we're not realizing what's important? We're spending our time doing, and I'm probably one of the worst, doing for the church, and I don't spend enough time studying. I don't spend enough time with God. How many of us are doing that? How can we have a balanced relationship if we don't spend time learning about God? You don't already know everything about God when you're 12 years old and you come out of Sunday school. You know what a 12-year-old knows. But aren't we supposed to grow up as adults in Christ and learn more and understand more? and challenge ourselves more, and get rid of that God sits on a cloud up in the sky somewhere and has a long white beard. But I know some people that still think that, and they're older than I am. Yeah, there are people older than I am. Lord have mercy. You see, we grow up, we don't come to Sunday school, we don't come to church to be affirmed in our ignorance. We come to grow. And if we don't, then we end up being just like Martha. We don't ever listen. We don't see what's important. It's not important to know it. It's important to know how much we don't know. And therefore, we continue to want to learn. (laughs) 
I was going to tell you about this week, but I'm not going to tell you about this week. It's been another one of the weeks in my family where uh, someone else has hit a catastrophe, and we've had another one. You see, we can't do God's work. We can't be God's hands and feet if we haven't learned about who God is. Because if we, if we just go out in the world, we're representing God falsely if we don't learn. I think the most important thing for any child to learn is that God loves you. If that's all you learn in Sunday school, you have learned the most important thing you can learn. But once you get to be a little older, you need to know a little more. You do need to know that God loves you all your life. But you need to understand how that love plays out and how you are to, what you are to do with that love and how you, we are to live in that love. And it's not by doing all the time. It's by stopping and learning. You're going to get a newsletter in not too long, and we're going to be offering all these, well, not all new, but some new classes. And I'm hoping they will spike your interest and you will come and actually study. Because everything we learn can be a truth from God. We don't have to just study Holy Scripture, but we're going to do that. We need to study how that applies to our lives every day. Or we never grow up. We never grow up. So, what is really being said in this? Well, I don't think the text is about siding with Mary or siding with Martha. I think it's about balance. You need to know when to do this, and when to do that. And if you have like this, because you're doing more than you're learning, then the kingdom of God is not going to be helped because you're not doing it for the correct reasons. You're doing it for yourself. You see, Martha and the lawyer were focused on whom? Themselves. Rather than focused on the things of God. This parable is not about bad or good. It's about balance. Balancing everything in our lives in such a way that we can become whole. It's about living into the kingdom of God. You can't do that by doing only. We need to have the other side. It's about loving God with all our heart, soul, strength, and our minds and our neighbors as ourselves. It's about growing to be a balanced disciple, a learner and then an apostle who goes out and shares. It's about growing up in Christ through the integration of prayer, worship, study, and service. Without all of those, it doesn't work. So I just have one question for you. How's your balance? How is your balance in your relationship with God? Let us pray.